Every town is a pharmacy on the corner. Looking to the future, can CVS Health become a cornerstone of your healthy routine? And will the stock belong in a healthy portfolio? For months, the healthcare stocks have been out of favor on the Wall Street Fashion Show. But after the Fed confirmed yesterday that we're in a low growth, low inflation environment, the whole group does become more attractive, particularly the ones with good dividends. Take CVS Health. The stock's been pulverized since the company acquired Aetna, the gigantic health insurer, late last year. The company just announced that it will sell CBD products. That's cannabis-based stuff uh, that won't get, get you high, at least in the states that you're allowed to sell, they'll do it. And its stock now sports a 3.6% yield and an eight times earnings multiple. I think it's gotten too cheap to ignore, but it's important to know that I've been dead wrong. I've told this to you on this show, and it's also ding my travel trust. I'm going to say it again. I've been dead wrong to like the stock. So let's see what's going on here. Earlier today, I got a chance to check in with Larry Merlot, the president and CEO of CVS Health, who, remember, did pull tobacco from his stores because he thought it was the right thing to do, even though it caused a big hit to earnings. Take a look. Larry, when you put Aetna together with CBS, I thought it was an absolute powerhouse. Now I'm wondering, when will it start generating growth, and are there things to do to accelerate that growth? Well, Jim, we're very excited about the opportunities for, you know, for growth as part of these two great companies coming together, and we're off to a great start. You know, it, it, the, the closing was announced less than four months ago. Uh, we have our first concept stores up and operating in the Houston market. It, you know, they've been operating for about 30 days. We're, you know, we're beginning to get some very important learnings. We're, you know, launching pilots, uh, you know, in a variety of areas in the market. So we're off to a great start. All right. Is there a disconnect between some of the analysts who really hope that you would have already integrated to where you could raise numbers and the reality, which is that it's just too early and you're still in a position where you can't guide. So don't force your hand to do so. Yeah, Jim, listen, 2019 is a transition year for the company. You know, we're making investments to bring the vision to life. You know, and at the same time, we're managing through some headwinds in the legacy CVS businesses. Some of those are transitory in nature, and we're taking some additional remediation steps you know, in response to that. But you know, we're very excited about the prospects for growth uh, as you know, these two companies not just come together, but you know, begin to translate the vision into a reality. Before we get to the vision, I want to be sure that some of the things that have kept the stock back that you know I've been disappointed in are in the rearview mirror, particularly long-term care, where a lot of the clients, frankly, are fragile, and you can't necessarily get your arms around uh, the slowing in that business. But you did say that you kind of recognize the problem and you're dealing with it. Is it behind us? Yeah, Jim, it's it, it, it's a, an important point that you know the, the skilled nursing facility you know has been under intense financial pressure. Right. We've seen that. You know, pressure downstream, you know, impact us. At the same time, we've made some changes in our tactical execution to, you know, the real growth opportunity in that space is in the assisted and the independent living right. space. So, you know, we feel that, you know, we're, the, we've got the business stabilized and it'll grow from this point forward. Okay, I'm in a beautiful store here, but what I really want is the concept store. I want one stop. I don't want to get uh, a product. I like to get service. How is Houston in terms of attracting people? Does it have a comp lift? And is it providing what is the one-stop shop that we all dreamed of when you put this together? Well, Jim, think about some of the challenges in healthcare today. Okay. Yeah, it, it, it's gotten way too you know, complex. It's difficult to use and navigate. It's placing a growing cost burden on, on consumers. And you know, we have an opportunity to change all that. Okay. You, know, you think about the imperatives that you know, this new company can create. The opportunity to make healthcare local, the opportunity to make it simple, and the opportunity to improve health. So let's take the local piece first. Okay, that you know people want to be able to access care when, where, when, and how it's convenient for them, whether it's in the community, in their home, or you know even in the palm of their hand today. That you know right. is yeah. you know is with us 24/7. So the concept stores begin to execute against that, that, uh, that imperative. You know, we've repurposed about 20% of what we call the front store you know, to services. So you walk in that store, you see uh, an expanded minute clinic that includes you know, in-clinic phlebotomy. It includes not just treatment for acute illness, but the management of chronic disease. We have a dietitian on staff, respiratory therapist, and we have what we're referring to the individual as a care concierge. 
And we're beginning to learn what is it that is important to customers? What are they seeking? You know, they're coming in asking questions about how do I uh, how do I more effectively use my benefit design? What does this mean? What does that mean? You know, we've got programs that are focused on wellness, where we're working you know, with you know, community leaders to you know, have programs, you know, sessions actually within the store. And then you think about the role of the pharmacy. Uh, it's not just about dispensing prescriptions, but we're identifying patients who need more personalized you know, follow-up about you know, their medication regimen. So, we're off to a great start. Uh, you know, some of this is anecdotal at this point, right. but you know, customers you know, love that one-stop you know, approach. Okay, now I'm a limited guy and I'm bound by the four walls of the spreadsheet. That's the way I've been taught for 35 years. Off to a great start versus numbers coming down. Off to a great start versus Amazon coming in hard. Off to a great start versus worries about a balance sheet that has a lot of debt. I'm trying to get my arms around the idea why because it's my job to talk about the stock, why the stock is not working. How did, how did the finest pharma pharmacy in the country sell at eight times earnings with the stock down cut in half? So I, I'd say, what's wrong with this picture, Larry? Help me here. Well, Jim, I, it, the opportunities for growth are here. You know, it's about the long-term story in terms of what this new model creates. You know, and you know, the opportunity to reduce medical costs, which we believe will drive membership. Okay. You know, you think about this combination of, no, yep, yep, and you know, th this combination, you know, has the opportunity to, you know, you think about innovative products and services that, you know, will be driven through the community assets okay. that we operate, and there's, you know, a revenue and margin gain from that, and then we also believe that we have an opportunity to take some of these products and services and sell them more broadly in the market. Jim, some of these learnings, uh, you know, they go back to. What more than 10 years ago now, when CVS and Caremark came together, and Jim, you look at the environment. You know, the, the lines are blurring between being competitors and being partners, right. and we have some of those learnings in the rearview mirror. If you look at Medicare as an example, you know, we have built uh, the largest uh, Medicare Part D drug plan, branded as Silver Script. It has more than six million members, but at the same time, we manage, you know, the Part D benefit for more than 40 health plans. So it's, it's a good example for us in terms of how you can be a competitor, but at the same time being you know, a business partner. But, but, but let's talk about this beautiful store. Okay? This is what I don't get. This is a great business. You have been a great businessman. This is a perfect brick and mortar store that I love to come to. How come it doesn't grow in earnings per share the way it used to? And is it Amazon that does it? Because is it execution? Because this should be providing more earnings per share while you integrate at well, Jim, listen, we've got momentum in our retail business. We're very pleased with, you know, the revenue growth that we're seeing, not just in pharmacy, but, you know, in the front store as well. Uh, and, you know, we expect that that momentum will continue. Jim, some of this is, you know, as we think about this new company, we're going to manage it, you know, at an enterprise level. Okay. And, you know, the benefit of this company is that we'll be able to do things that, you know, as a standalone CVS or a standalone Aetna, you know, neither company would have been able to do. I think that's okay. the real exciting part of so, the future. So those who say that you shouldn't have bought that and you should have just bought back stock, they're limited in their thinking? I would say they're limited in their thinking. That, you know, Jim, the healthcare industry is now more than three and a half trillion dollars. Right. Okay, it's growing at an unsustainable rate as we all know. We talked about some of the challenges and the complexities and, you know, there are a variety of studies out there that estimate you know, upwards of 20 to 25 percent of healthcare spending is wasteful, avoidable, can be reduced. You know, percentage points are going to matter here. You know, think right. about some I of agree. the things that we talked about. Being able to reduce, you know, those you know unnecessary costs. You know, the value created is going to start with a B as in billion. Okay. That's the opportunity that's in okay. front of us. You have always been a good merchant. I think people underestimate you for being so. You are a bold merchant. You took tobacco out, which you know I thought was one of the greatest things that anyone could do in terms of just a setback for a bad industry. You just brought in cannabis for some stores. Uh, radical or necessary? 
Well, Jim, it's you know it's interesting, and I appreciate the comment uh, you know on tobacco, and we're continuing the journey. We had an announcement yesterday of you know the work that we're doing with the American Cancer Society, you know uh, the the truth in terms of you know helping to make college campuses you know smoke free, and you know we're making tremendous progress. We're very proud of you know the work that's being done there, you know in partnership with the Truth Initiative and right. and, and Cancer Society. Jim, as you look at you know the CBD products as right. it's referred to, you know we're going to be carrying them, you know in eight states. We're going to be carrying uh, the topical products only, branded the, the by gels, CVS? not branded by yeah. CVS. And you know, Jim, you know anecdotally, we've heard from our customers that you know have used those products. That gee, it's helped with you know pain relief for arthritis and you know other you know uh, you know other ailments. So. You know, we're going to walk slowly, but you know, we think that this is something that customers are going to be looking for, and is you know part of the health offer. Okay, so bottom line, it's going to come together. Be patient. Don't be freaked out about the stock. It's a 2020 vision that could still uh, come together in, in a milestone way in 2019, where we could find some things that we like. Jim, we're, we're, we've got a great team. We're working with a sense of urgency, and we're excited about the future. Oh, I can't ask for more than that. That's Larry Merlot. He's the CEO of CVS Health. CVS, tough stock to own, good company. Thank you, Larry. Thanks, Jim. Yeah. Booyah! Jim Cramer here from Mad Money. Thanks for watching CNBC on YouTube. Click here to subscribe and get the jump on my exclusives with CEOs, plus market news, investing advice, and a whole lot more.